In today's video, we'll go over how to manage data flow in your SwiftUI and RealityKit apps using an environment object. Before we learn how to implement an environment object, let's first try to get an intuitive understanding of why we may want to use it in the first place. You know, when building a somewhat sophisticated augmented reality app, we should be very intentional about its architecture. Using the wrong tool or structure may result in unnecessary complexity, messy code, and even a poor user experience. Once our furniture app is finished, it'll have a screen for an AR view container and a control view, another screen for a browse view, and finally a screen for an AR view container and a placement view. In previous videos, we have implemented the first two screens. In this video, we'll implement the third screen with an AR view container and a placement view. Given these screens and views, let's take a look at what our app looks like in diagram form. This is a simple diagram of key views in our app. The content view is the main view in our app. The content view contains an AR view container, a control view, and a placement view. As we've learned, the AR view container acts as a wrapper for our AR view. From our control view, we can launch our browse view as a Swift UI sheet. And finally, when the user has selected a model in our browse view, the placement view should be displayed to either confirm or cancel placement of the model. At a minimum, we will need to manage two variables. The first variable will be selected model and will keep track of which model the user has selected from our browse view. The selected model variable then needs to be passed onto the placement view. The placement view will read and clear the selected model. The second variable we have to create is confirmed model. When the user confirms the selected model for placement in the scene, the selected model is assigned to confirmed model. The confirmed model variable needs to be passed onto the AR view, which will take care of placement in the scene. From this diagram, we can see that our data has to reach the bottom children nodes of our simplified view hierarchy. I'm not suggesting this, but if we were to use state and binding variables, we would have to pass a binding through several layers of our view hierarchy. Almost every view would need a binding to state properties in content view. In addition, state properties are intended to manage user interface state, not necessarily to pass around model data. Apple has some really good documentation and examples on how to manage user interface state and data flow. I highly recommend you take a look. In this video, we'll focus on managing model data using the observable object protocol and the observed object, environment object, and state object property wrappers. Apple's documentation provides a good example of how and when to use these protocols and structures. I will, of course, also show you how to use them in our AR Furniture app. Before we get started, this is the hardware and software used in this video. If you're using anything older or newer, you might have to make some adjustments to your code. Now let's get started. We have quite a few action items for this video, but fear not, we'll go through them step by step. First, we have to create a new class called Placement Settings. This object will adopt the observable protocol and will contain several published properties. Second, we'll create a state object for placement settings in our top level app instance. The top level app instance is marked by the main attribute, which specifies the app's main entry point to the Swift compiler. Next, we'll use an environment object view modifier to put the placement setting state object into the app environment. Any descendant view of the view to which we apply the environment object modifier will be able to access the placement settings data. Next, we'll implement our placement logic in browse view. To access our placement settings, we declare a property with the environment object attribute. Once we have our placement logic in browse view, we can create our placement view, which will display cancel and confirm buttons. Next, we can implement placement logic in content view. And finally, we'll need to add a placement settings instance to the preview provider to any view that uses the placement settings object or that has a descendant that uses the object. So without further ado, let's dive into the code. So the first thing we'll do is create our placement settings class. To do so, we'll create a new file. Right click on browseview.swift and select new file. Select iOS as the platform and Swift file as the template. Click next. Give the file a name. In this case, we'll call it placement settings. Click create. We can remove import foundation and instead import three frameworks. We'll import SwiftUI, RealityKit, and combine. Create a new class called placement settings and have it adopt the observable object protocol. Our class will have two properties. The first property will be a published variable called selected model and will have a type of optional model. We'll use a property observer to log any changes in the selected model value. In this case, we'll use the will set property observer to print a message to the console. 
The message will say, setting selected model to, and then the name of the model. The second property will be a published variable called confirmed model and will have a type of optional model. Again, we'll use a property observer to log any changes in the value. We'll use will set again. First, we'll check if the new value is not nil. If it is, the confirmed model has been cleared and we print clearing confirmed model. If it's not nil, we proceed and print setting confirmed model. We are done with our placement settings class. But before we move on, let's add comments for documentation. For the selected model property, we'll add a comment saying, when the user selects a model in browse view, this property is set. For the confirmed model property, we'll add a comment saying, when the user taps confirm in placement view, the value of selected model is assigned to confirmed model. Our first action item has been completed. Next, we'll work on creating a state object in our top level app instance. We're going to open up our ARF app Swift file. This is the main entry point for our app. If you've ever built iOS apps with UIKit, the app file is comparable to app delegate for UIKit. Let's create a state object for placement settings. At this point, you might be wondering why we're even creating a state object. In order for SwiftUI to monitor an observable object, we need to add an observed object attribute to our properties declaration. By doing this, SwiftUI will automatically update affected views when data in our property changes. However, and this is important, it is unsafe to use an observed object inside of a view because SwiftUI might create or recreate views many times. This can cause issues having multiple observed objects. So instead, we should use a state object. A state object behaves just like an observed object, but Swift UI knows to create and manage one object instance for a given view instance. Next, we'll use an environment object view modifier to put the placement setting state object into the app environment. By doing this, we don't have to pass around our data model through many layers of our view hierarchy. Next, we'll implement our placement logic in browse view. Scroll down to our horizontal grid struct. We'll need to access our placement settings in this view. To access our placement settings, we declare a property with the environment object attribute. We can now scroll down to our to do comment in our item button action closure. Remove the comment and assign the model constant to the selected model property in placement settings. We are now done implementing our placement logic in browse view and can move on to creating our placement view. To do so, we'll create a new file. Right-click on browseview.swift and select New File. Select iOS as the platform and Swift file as a template. Click Next. Give the file a name. In this case, we'll call it Placement View. Click Create. We can remove Import Foundation and instead import Swift UI. We'll start off by creating a custom button, which will be used for a Cancel and Confirm buttons. Create a new struct called Placement Button and have it adopt the View Protocol. To confirm to the view protocol, add a body variable and use Xcode autocomplete to help you along. Before we populate the body, let's create two constants. Create a constant called system icon name and set its type to string. Create another constant called action and set its type to a closure. Inside the body variable, create a skeleton for our button. In the action block, call our action constant. In the label block, create an image using the system name constructor. Pass in our system icon name constant. We'll use several modifiers to style our image. Set the font to the system font with a font size of 50. Set the font weight to light and the design to default. We'll set the foreground color to white and the button style to plain button style. We will also add a frame modifier to the button itself. We'll set the frame width and height to 75 points. Our placement button is now complete. Above our placement button, we'll create our placement view. Create a new struct called placement view and have it adopt the view protocol. To conform to the view protocol, add a body variable and use Xcode autocomplete to help you along. Before we populate the body, let's declare a placement settings property with the environment object attribute. Inside the body, we can add an H tag. Because we want two buttons side by side horizontally, an H tag works well. Inside our H tag, we'll create two buttons a cancel button on the left and a confirm button on the right. Let's create our cancel button. 
create a new placement button and pass in xmark.circle.fill for the system icon name. Inside the button action closure, create a print statement with the message cancel placement button pressed. We will also set the selected model and placement settings to nil. We are essentially clearing the selected model because the user has canceled placement. Next, we can create our confirm button. Create a new placement button and pass in checkmark.circle.fill for the system icon name. Inside the button action closure, create a print statement with the message confirm placement button pressed. Next, assign the selected model and placement settings to the confirmed model property in placement settings. We will also set the selected model and placement settings to nil. These two steps essentially transfer the model from a selected state to a confirmed state. To make things look good, we'll add a spacer to the left and right of the cancel button and another spacer to the right of the confirm button. This will space out the buttons evenly. We will also add padding to the bottom of the H stack. We'll set it to 30 points. We are now done implementing our placement view and can move on to implementing our placement logic in content view. In our content view struct, we'll declare a placement settings property with the environment object attribute. Next, inside our Z stack, we'll create an if statement to display either our control view or our placement view. Our control view will be displayed if no model has been selected. Essentially, if selected model in placement settings is nil, display the control view, else display a placement view. We are almost done. Before we test our app, let's add a placement settings instance to the preview provider in content view. This will ensure that our app preview doesn't crash when using the canvas to preview our app. Let's run the app. When we select an object for placement, we see that the placement view is now displayed. When we tap on the cancel button, selected model is cleared and we are now back to our control view. Let's again select a model. In the console we see model entity has been loaded. When we tap on the confirmed button, we see two new messages in the console, setting confirmed model and setting selected model to nil. Confirmed model will be handed off to the AR view for placement in the scene. This will be covered in the next video. And that's it for this video.